you remember the Houston Police Department? You remember uh, the names Dennis and Regina Tuttle? They were um, a, a task force, a drug interdiction squad, or basically a SWAT team, swatted their house, killed the Tuttles, killed their dog, an officer, a couple of officers were shot or whatever. Um, people in Houston made a huge deal about it because they were like, there's no way Dennis and Regina were guilty of what you guys are saying they were guilty of. They didn't find the drugs that they got the warrant for. The warrant was served on the wrong house or whatever. Um, but this was the reaction of President Joe Gamaldi for the Houston Police Officers Union. This, this was what he said about people who were exposing the criminal actions of the Houston Police Department operated under uh, Police Chief Art Acevedo, um, saying, hey, you, what you did was unjust. It was wrong. It was criminal activity that you foisted against these people. Now these people and their dog are dead. And we're, we're going to be out here with cameras and we're going to be exposing your nonsense. Well, here was the police officers union president's response to that. But now I want to speak on behalf of the 5,200 brave men and women of the Houston Police Department and the other 800,000 police officers that are working these streets every single day, putting their lives on the line. We are sick and tired of having targets on our back. We are sick and tired of having dirt bags trying to take our lives when all we're trying to do is protect this community and protect our families. Enough is enough. And if you're the ones that are out there spreading the rhetoric that police officers are the enemy. Spreading the rhetoric. If you're out there spreading the rhetoric that police officers are the enemy. Now remember the context is the enemy police department, the enemy Houston police department going to Dennis and Regina Tuttle's house and ending their lives. That's the context. So if you're out there spreading the rhetoric that we're engaging in criminal activity, what, what, what's going to happen? Uh, police officers union president, Joe Gamaldi, what's, what's going to happen? Well, just know we've all got your number. Now we're going to be keeping track of all y'all and we're going to make sure that we hold you accountable. Every time you stir the pot on our police officers, we've had enough folks. Wait a second. So what you're saying is if you people out there with cameras, if you members of the public who are tired of the injustice that's going on in your community through the Houston police department, we've got your number. If you think you're going to be out there spreading rhetoric and, and videotaping us and holding us accountable and holding our feet to the fire, we've got your number. What does that sound like? That sounds like retaliation against people who are trying to hold people in authority accountable. And then we get to this video, a masterful video, by the way, done by James Freeman. This video has got 251,000 views. He just released it yesterday. This video should have 330 million views. Why 330 million? Because that would signify that every single person in the United States, or at least fulfill, fulfill that number, has seen this video because they need to see it. This was police officer retaliation because Big G audits caught one of their sergeants speeding, but he wasn't speeding to go to a fire or to help somebody or to assist in a traffic accident. This officer was speeding so he could get in line to a fast food joint. I'm going to play some of this right here. I'm not going to play all of it, but James Freeman does a fantastic job using sarcasm to bring out the truth of how vile these police departments are and the backdrop of this video that we're looking at right Right here is what this Joe Gamaldi said about, hey, if you try to offer some kind of layer of accountability for our police departments, we got your number. I know I do a lot of videos about bad cops, but cops aren't always being bad. Sometimes they're working hard to bust real hardened criminals and remove them from our society. <laughs> As you can see by the show of force in this video, this is one of those instances. On October 18th, 2022. And, and this, this makes me think too, good thing. I'm so glad that Big G audits had cameras around his house. That makes, that makes me think, hey, maybe it'd be a good idea. I'm not advising anybody to do anything, but maybe it would be a good idea to at least think about getting cameras in front and uh, behind your house and maybe on the sides. 5.04 a.m. Kingsport, Tennessee. Police, in conjunction with Sullivan County Sheriff's deputies, busted into a home to serve a warrant on Big G audits. As you can see, they're dealing with a dangerous criminal. They have their guns drawn and one officer is even holding a shotgun. Police enter the home on high alert. Warrant in hand for Joshua Gibbons for capital 
Oh wait, no. Oh, sheriff's office. Different story. Yeah, capital. Oh, that's right. It's not for capital murder. You, I mean, you would expect these kind of actions from law enforcement. You would expect this kind of firepower. You would expect these kind of resources to be deployed against somebody who was, you know, had a warrant issued for him for harming a lot of people. But that's not what it was. It was because a man with a camera was passed by a cop who was speeding when that cop would have given this guy a camera. So he records it and then he holds this officer accountable, asks him for his name. The officer doesn't give it. Find out, finds out he's a sergeant. The officer's not going on an emergency. He doesn't have his lights activated. He doesn't have his sirens activated. He's just wanting to get, get in line to that fast food restaurant. And then he lies about the fact that he's, he was speeding. Big G audit says, did you caught you speeding back? I wasn't speeding. I wasn't speeding. This is eight, this is eight days after Big G audits caught this sergeant from this police department speeding. Enter the home with warrant in hand for speeding. Sheriff's office. Speeding. To understand how we got here, let's go back in time. And another example of where are the good cops? Hold on, hold on, Sarge. Okay, uh, you know we're going on this. We're going on this unit. We're going on this raid. We're going to serve this warrant. What are we serving the warrant on? Oh, the guy was speeding. The guy was disrespectful to a cop. The guy was using his portable device while he was driving. Wait a second. We're going to go to this guy's house, jeopardize the lives of our officers. If we go early in the morning, somebody could defend their house under the castle doctrine. And one of us could get hurt. Number one. So it doesn't make any sense. Number two, what do you mean? We're serving a warrant on a speeding ticket. We've never done that. Why are we doing that? I'm not count me out. I'm not doing it. Where are those good cops? Where are they? Days. Joshua was on his way home when he was stopped at a red light next to a Kingsport, Tennessee police officer wearing a patch that reads courage, integrity, justice. <laughs> Automatically, when I see a government functionary throwing out these words, I know it's going to be the exact opposite. It's not courage. It's cowardice. It's not integrity. It's lack of responsibility. It's it's evil. It's not justice. It's injustice. Anytime I see any government functionary, I don't care if it's a politician, I don't care if they're a senator, a congressman, I don't care if they're team red, team blue, Republican, Democrat, I don't care if they're a judge, I don't care if they're a bailiff, I don't care if they're a police officer. If they start using these words right here, starts coming out of their mouth, I know the exact opposite is true. How do I know? Because 100% of the time when they start talking like this, that's, it's, it's absolutely false. It's exactly the 180 degrees in the opposite direction of where they're trying to point you. They're, they act all nice. They try to get on your good side. They crack jokes, but they're only trying to extract information from you for your detriment, not for your benefit. Courage, integrity, and justice. The Kings Kingsport, Tennessee Police Department. Port Tennessee Police Department will display all three of these things in this one video. When the light turns green and the officer takes off, he appears to be speeding. It appears that Joshua pulls... How many times has this happened to you? I can't even count the times it happened to me, happens to me. There's this speed trap. And I've said this to you guys before. There's this speed trap where going, uh, going South it's 30 and then it increases to 45. So going North it's 45 and in, and decreases to 35. So 35 to 45 South, 45 to 35 North. And if you're doing two miles an hour over the posted speed limit, you will get pulled over because they are almost always sitting in this empty car lot. It's super dark. You can't see they've got the, they've got that. What is it called? Ghost lettering on the side of their cars, or at least they used to have ghost lettering. I think they phased that out. I haven't seen those guys lately, or they're in some kind of unmarked uncovered car sitting in the darkness where you can't see them just waiting for you to come by. But they'll, they'll, no problem. They'll speed past you so they can go to the convenience mart or so they can meet up with their buddies, their thin blue line buddies in the next parking lot over. ...out his camcorder and starts recording. Now this is what, how fast we're supposed to be going. 45. So what the speed limit is down through here, 45. Look at that, is he doing 45? I don't think he's doing 45, do you? Is he leaving us to sit? Mm -hmm. He's definitely yeah. speeding. Look at that. So it's like he's a speeding. He's leaving me. He is leaving me. So now they got they got him speeding because it looks like according to the odometer that would be fifty right there. That's fifty. So he's doing about fifty three and a forty five. So they get him speeding. 
So this is for a speeding ticket. Oh, you you were stupid enough to record yourself speeding. It's like, yeah, I'm recording your guy speeding and I'm showing you from my speedometer that he's not doing the speed limit. So you're going to give me a speed limit, a speeding ticket and not issue him a speeding ticket? It's 45 down through here. Joshua appears to get up to about 52 miles an hour, but the sergeant is still pulling away from him. So Joshua gives up. But he sees the Literally officer speeding. pull into a drive through and pulls in to confront him. This is where the officer displayed courage. He was willing to courageously risk. <laughs> you gotta love James, James Freeman, man. You gotta love this. This is high level, premium grade, top shelf sarcasm. The safety of you and your families speeding down the highway in an attempt to get a better spot in line for fast food. Is there any way, uh, can I ask you a question what your name badge number is? No, sir. No, no sir? sir? Yeah, okay. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What are you talking about? No, sir. Aren't you a public, public what? Public, uh, help me with that next word. It starts with an S. Public uh, servant? Don't, sir, aren't servants beholden to their masters, the public? And so when I request your name and your badge number as a public servant, aren't you required to give it? The reason why that you feel like you can speed down through here and break the traffic laws? Oh, he's using a portable device. Here's a portable device and here's a portable device. So the two crimes that we already know that they say Big G audits committed was speeding, which we've already caught this sergeant speeding and using a portable device while driving. Well, he was using a portable, two, two portable devices while driving. You weren't speeding? Okay, well. This is where the Kingsport Police Department displays integrity. After being <laughs> caught on yeah. camera, speeding, and confronted about it, the sergeant with the Kingsport, Tennessee Police Department lies. You are speeding? Within police departments, this is known as integrity. What's your car number? Okay. Well, I've got you recorded speeding, so you're full of shit. You sure you don't want me to give you your name, badge number? No, sir, I don't wish to create joinder. Okay. I do not wish to create yeah. joinder, he says. You'll be getting a formal complaint. Did he really say that? I don't know why you feel you're above the law. You have to obey by the traffic laws just like everybody else when you're not running an emergency. Why you think you can do 55 mile an hour down Stone Drive, I have no idea. You piece of shit. When the sergeant got back to the office and discussed the incident with his supervisor, they talked about how the sergeant had displayed courage and integrity, but how he had failed to display justice on that particular evening. Eight days later, they remedied the situation by delivering justice to the men who put their courage and integrity on display on the internet. In yet another display of courage, the Kingsport police conspire with, I mean, worked together with Sullivan County Sheriff to serve an arrest warrant on the man who showed their courage and integrity on the internet. I would like to ask you guys out in the audience, whoever's watching this video right now, have you ever been the victim of retaliation, some retaliatory action by the police department because you held them to account and you tried to hold them accountable for criminal actions they were committing on the public? If you have, I would like to hear your comments in the comment section because I bet it's way more people out there than we think. Because think about it. You are big G audits. I am big G audits. If you were out there and you held this, think about it. You're holding a cop accountable to the same standard he would hold you. So you're not being unfair. You're being absolutely just. And the reason you're doing it is for the very reason they say they're doing it to you, even though their reason is, is uh, bogus. What if while he's speeding, he got into an accident or he hit a pedestrian or, you know, maybe he was looking at his laptop. We've seen that. Remember that cop who was playing video games on his government issued laptop and he got into an accident. I think he had been in three officer involved accidents where they were all his fault, but he was still on the force. What if he was looking on his laptop? What if he was fiddling around on his phone and he got into an accident while he was speeding on his way to a non-emergency fast food run?
unbelievable. Five o'clock in the morning. Just in case you're driving and you're not able to read the screen right here, it says my elderly mother without her hearing aid opens the door thinking it's my son coming home. Uh, yeah. Where's he at? Hey. Which bed is it? We got a warrant for his arrest. A warrant for his arrest. And this is when, as she told me later, they pushed past her to gain entry and wouldn't let her get me. Well, man, you know the story walking can you imagine all these guys walking in your house you've not hurt anybody you've not threatened anybody you didn't damage somebody's pride it wasn't a hit and run and when i say push she said they shoved her out of the way twice sullivan county has disrespected my mom <laughs> disorderly conduct was because the cop, the sergeant who was in the fast food restaurant who got called out for speeding, didn't like him being yelled at, didn't like being yelled at by big D audits. Yeah, no bill sit. In case you didn't hear, it appears that they actually got a judge to sign off on a warrant for speeding, prohibited use of cell phone, and disorderly conduct. That's not collusion, is it? The judge signed off on a warrant to go get this guy for speeding and disorderly conduct and cell phone use. All for the evening when he confronted a police officer about speeding. They claim that he used his cell phone while driving, recording himself speeding, and that calling the piece of shit sergeant a piece of shit was disorderly conduct. Why you think you can do 55 mile an hour down Stone Drive? I have no idea, you piece of shit. Now I understand that to any reasonable human being, this looks like retaliation. And I'm sure that's how it'll look in front of a jury too. But to unreasonable, irrational people like me, this looks like courage, integrity, and justice. Therefore, I called the department to thank them for it. And before we get to this phone call, which I, I so appreciate, James Freeman taking that one extra step to call this police department who is absolutely responsible for the criminal actions that they laid on big G audits. Just as a, just as another reminder of the fact that there is such a thing as police department retaliation hit it. Joe Gamaldi from the Houston police officers union. The, this is the president. This is the top dog of the Houston police officers union. They're doing our jobs every day, putting our lives on the line for our families. Enough is enough. But now I want to speak on behalf of the 5,200 brave men and women of the Houston police department and the other 800. And again, this is after his Houston police department illegally, immorally, and criminally ended the lives of Dennis and Regina Tuttle hundred thousand police officers that are working these streets every single day putting their lives on the line we are sick and tired of having targets on our back we are sick and tired of having dirt bags trying to take our lives when all we're trying to do is protect this community and protect our families <laughs> yeah that's all they're trying to do and you're sick and tired of targets on your back we're sick and tired of your target on our backs enough is enough here's the coup de gras though and if you're the ones that are out there spreading the rhetoric that police officers are the enemy, well, just know we've all got your number now. We're going to be keeping track of all of y'all, and we're going to make sure that we hold you accountable every time you stir the pot on our police officers. We got your number. You keep stirring the pot and trying to expose our evil deeds. We got your number. We know where you live, and we're going to keep track of you. That's not retaliation. Back to this, and I'm again, I'm not going to play this whole thing, but this is a very interesting conversation he has with this cop at the Kingsport Police Department. 
You have reached the City of Kingsport Police Department. How can I help you? This is James. Are you an officer with the department or dispatcher? I'm a dispatcher, sir. Oh, okay. Could I speak to an officer? I really just wanted to thank an officer that just wanted to brighten their day and... Oh, okay. Oh, okay. No hey, problem. James. Hey, how's it going? Hey, pretty good. Hey, it's Chris Hinter, Kingsport Police Department. I was told to give you a call. Yeah, how you doing? And of hey. course they called back because they think they're going to get a commendation, not a condemnation. Hey, Chris? Uh, hanging in there. Just busy. Busy day. One of those... I'm protecting and serving, huh? <laughs> We're trying. <laughs> We're here trying. What what'd you say your last name was, Chris? It's Tincher. Tincher? No, Tincher. T I N C H E R. Oh, okay. All right. Right on, man. Well, I don't know if the dispatcher called you, but I just wanted to call and give you a big thank you. Um, okay. I, uh, yeah, I didn't have a crime to report or anything. Actually, I, I recently saw something where. Um, where your officers displayed uh, everything that, that's written on the, the little patch in, in basically one incident, you know, courage, integrity, and justice. Um, okay, well, thank you. Yeah, did you want me to tell you a little bit about what it was, or? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, I like to hear it. Yeah, we, we like, we like. I to... thought you were busy. Now, if you thought it was going to be something that was bad, you probably no, I'm really kind of covered up right now. But now that you think it's going to be something good. That you can, you know, you can put a little notch on your wall of something good that the public's got to say about you. Hey, you, I'm all ears, man. Uh, compliments. So, so yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. So um, I, I recently saw uh, one of your officers in a in a very courageous first. I mean, in order, courageous integrity and then justice. He courageously sped to a fast food restaurant uh, to get a better spot in line. Um, kind of risking, you know, the safety of everybody on the road, but still, current. you know, for a good reason, and, and that was to get a good spot in line at the fast food restaurant. Yeah. Then, when someone confronted him about it and said, "Hey, man, I caught you on camera speeding," he uh, had the integrity to deny it and lie <laughs> right there on camera. <laughs> and then eight days later, the entire department actually got together with the sheriff's department because they they didn't serve justice that day. It was just courage and integrity. Uh, so a few days later, maybe a week later, they went and served justice and actually served an arrest warrant on this guy for uh, displaying the officer um, speeding and lying on the Internet. So um, and I, I know that a lot of people just want to give you guys a hard time about that, but they don't understand what it's like being a police officer. And I wish that they would try to put themselves in your guys' shoes and understand that everything you guys do is courageous. And whether you're lying or telling the truth, it's integrity. And um, what could, what, what, what more could be justice than, you know, busting into a guy's house for speeding? Am I right? Yeah, we, we, do, we do appreciate your uh, perspective. Yeah. So, I mean, I wanted to say thank you. I, I'm genuinely, I appreciate it. I appreciate your calling to let us know about that. Obviously, we, we've received. What should the response have been to this guy on the phone? Wait a second. You're telling me one of our officers was speeding and you guys got it on camera? I, I'm not aware of this, if he if he truly wasn't aware of this. You gotta be kidding me. And then, wait, you're saying that he held him accountable? The guy wasn't on an emergency call, didn't have his lights, didn't have his sirens on, but he was at a fast food restaurant? He wouldn't give his name? And then he lied about it? And you guys got this stuff on video? And then eight days later, they actually went and executed a warrant for speeding? You gotta be kidding me. Let, let me let me take down the details. Let me Let me assure you, James, if this is happening in my department, if I catch that kind of criminal behavior going on here, you mean he jeopardized the lives of everybody in that house by executing a warrant at five o'clock in the morning? Yeah, we're let's uh, we're going to get to the bottom of this, James. And, and if we have to, we'll go to local news. Matter of fact, let's go to local news because we are interested in transparency here. We are interested in being courageous, filled with integrity and full of justice. But that wasn't his response. Not at all. No apology. Nothing. Numerous calls of people with opinions like yours. So you're telling me a lot of people actually genuinely appreciate you guys doing what you did. We have about sixty thousand people in this city, roughly, that we serve, and uh, the citizens of this city are pretty appreciative of our, of our department. Yeah. Uh, a, a lot of them don't know the things. I guess that we have to put up with on a daily basis yeah absolutely and, and, you know 
and obviously, you know, if they knew a lot of these things, I'm sure they would be, you know, even more appreciative of what, what we do for them. Right. So, uh, Kingsport, Tennessee has about 55,000 people. I don't know what he's saying, 70,000 or whatever number he threw out there, but it wasn't the, well, I, I think he said 60,000. So I guess, you know, we'll cut him some slack on that. Kingsport, Tennessee, 55,000, Johnson City. This is the Tri-Cities area, Johnson City, Kingsport, and Bristol. That's in East Tennessee. But the fact that he wasn't incensed and outraged that people in his department would voice that kind of criminal activity on a public that he swore to protect and serve, why didn't he say to James, man, let me tell you, James, I, I have not been aware of that kind of stuff. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, you're a part of a police department. You're not aware of the criminal activities and actions of your fellow thin blue line gang members. You're not aware of the double standard. You're not aware that everybody in your department department commits hypocrisy on a massive scale on a daily basis by speeding and doing things that if we all did those things, we'd be cited or we'd be imprisoned for. Yeah, right. But let's say you're new to the force. The new to the force. Government's not eloquence. It's not reason. It's force. And like fire, it's a dangerous servant and a fearful master, said Washington. But if I find out that somebody is a part of the force and has done that, we're going to get to the bottom of it. And I will get back with you because we are filled with integrity here. Guess what? You would either not hear back from him or you would hear back from this guy. Uh, yeah, I was put on. Uh, they, they basically suspended me and they're going to conduct an investigation on me and I'm probably not going to be a part of the department anymore because that's what happens. There are three kinds of cops. There are ones who voice the criminal activity on people, on the general public that they're supposed to be protecting and serving. There's the ones who see the criminal activity forced on the people, voice it on the people and they don't say anything. And then there are the, those very, very, very few. I mean, they are rare. They're as rare as finding a diamond on the beach. There are those ones that see the criminal activity, see the cops who are silent about the criminal activity and then blowing the whistle. Well, they're, they're not cops very long because they're forced out or they get uh, you know caught under friendly fire circumstances as we've seen in some of these SWAT cases right here. It's like, oh yeah, two officers died. How did they die? Oh, gunfire from inside the house. And then you find out from the internal investigation, oh, the gunfire didn't come from inside the house. Oh, oh. Oh, that was the odd man out who kept blowing the whistle on all you criminal cops. Oh, I got it. I got you. Thanks, Archie. Um, you know, again, I mean, you've got to have your perspective or your, I guess, opinion. I mean, that's what, that's what it's called America. You're allowed to have that. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I'm fine with it. <laughs> Except, you know, it, yeah, but the only problem is it's not an opinion. It was actually recorded on video. Your cop was speeding. We do have him on camera lying about speeding. We do have all the cops on camera eight days later coming to an act injustice, not justice. This is just a problem. It's not about my opinion. It's about the camera don't lie. Well, no, I genuinely appreciate what, what your officers did. I genuinely appreciate it. Well, again, I, you can have your opinion, but I, I, I appreciate you calling in and letting us know about it, okay? Okay. Um, in, in the future, can you, can you do this more often? And I always try to tell people, look, we 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 are actually the shortage of officers. Uh, I think a lot of places are the shortage of officers in the country. Yeah. yeah. And and you know, there's well, of course there's a shortage. You know why? Because when a man on the street on a public sidewalk with a camera is trying to film public buildings, or he's trying to film the activities of cops. Eight cops, 10 cops show up on the scene and they deploy all these resources against that guy with a camera who's actually standing there exercising his constitutional right, which those cops swore to protect and defend, but they won't deploy the resources on all these cold cases where all these people went missing or the massive uh, human trafficking that's happening in their neck of the woods or all this drug running that they say is happening. No, they're too busy, busy pulling people over, citing single mothers who are barely able to put food on the table, uh, incarcerating people, kidnapping them, caging for crimes where there was no victim, there was no violence, there was no theft, while rapists, murders, and extortionists are free to free to do whatever they want to. Of course you had to have a shortage because you deploy all your resources on things you shouldn't be deploying on and you don't deploy resources on th the things that you should be deploying it on. Of course there's a shortage. It's called misappropriation of funds. It's called not being resourceful. It's called not being, um, uh, not using your noodle, not using common sense, not being efficient and therefore you're not effective. And the reason you say you want more officers is so that you can, it looks like, 
looks like so you can act, enact more domestic terrorism because you got what it takes to take what we've got, especially when you've got MRAPs and you've got those horses and you've got those motorcycles and you've got those helicopters in there and you've got those trained canines who are going to actually do that false hit so that you can have a reasonable cause to violate my right to be secure under my person's houses, papers, and effects. A lot of people got a lot of good ideas and a lot of people that could probably maybe step up and fill some of these roles, you know, in law enforcement. So, you know, you or whoever you're talking about want to do that. I mean, I, I would welcome it. Uh, That's a, You know, like I said, because a lot of people sound like they, they have good ideas and they could probably, you know, come into a department and, and probably those ideas, they could probably use them. Because it sounds like they got a lot of training and a, I guess a lot of perspective on what law enforcement's about. So I would love to have those people come in and go out here and show, you know, the people that's been here for a while. Maybe show them a better way how to do it. Yeah, you know, and that'd be great. Yeah, I um, it's I, not it's not about a better way at this point. It's about doing the right thing. It's about eschewing wrong and fleeing toward what is right. It's about traveling the road of justice and abandoning the road of injustice. It's about making this world a better place instead of adding to the evil in the world. You know, that it, it's that's an excellent topic to talk about, actually. You guys aren't the only ones facing a shortage. Uh, it's nationwide. It is nationwide. It is. Um, and, you know, there's got to be a reason, right, that it's nationwide. And, and Okay, there's about four and a half more minutes on this James Freeman video. I'm not going to... I don't want to spoil the end here. Please watch this video. This video, like I said at the beginning of this video right here, this, this video should have 331 million views. 331 million is supposed to be the population of the United States. In other words, everybody in the United States, man, woman, and child needs to see this video because there is such a thing. According to the Houston Police Officers Union President Joe Gamaldi, there is such a thing, at least from the Houston Police Department, as police retaliation. We saw it coming out of his own mouth. I'm not making this kind of stuff up. There is such a thing as the Mullen Commission. There is such a thing as them investigating the New York City Police Department time and time and time again and re re realizing that the corruption that was involved in the New York City Police Department and is involved and ingrained in the New York City P Police Department is above and beyond what anybody could possibly imagine that it was. This is about coming to the conclusion and taking the smelling salts of reality and seeing that these, these pockets of resistance and re police re retaliation and domestic terrorism are not isolated incidents. They are things that happen all the time on a continu continuous basis, incessantly. This isn't about, oh, there's a couple of bad apples. This is about there's a mountain of bad police departments filled with an incredible amount of police officers. All you got to think about is those two, co I cannot remember except that, I, that one cop's name, uh, Daria Jalali, who helped that other cop, if you can help me with the name of the other cop, in the Loveland Police Department manhandle Karen Garner, who forgot to pay for $14 worth of stuff at Walmart. And they decided to break her arm and throw her into a cell. And right outside the cell, they chose to laugh about what they had just done to that 73-year-old lady. You think those are isolated incidents? If they're so isolated, then why did 100% of the officers, including the sergeant on command, why did 100% of the police officers who were involved in that incident do nothing just? They didn't write a right report. They didn't tell the truth. They didn't tell the people who should have been told. They didn't treat uh, Karen Garner the way they would treat. They would, I would hope that they would want their own mother treated. Although, you know, at this point, I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure that they wouldn't treat their own mothers like that or their own sisters or their own, you know, just any member of their family like this. Because it seems psychotic to me. Seems like we got a deep-seated mental problem going on in police departments. And it seems like the only people that they're willing to hire are those people who have these psychotic episodes and these gel-filled minds that are just willing to be conformers instead of uh, transformers of society. Leave your thoughts about this. If you haven't, uh, what I'll do is when this video gets done rendering, because we're on a live stream right now, but I will, I will put the link to James Freeman's video in the description and in the pinned comment, do yourself a favor, watch this, 
give it a thumbs up. And after you get done watching James' video, share that video, that, share it with everybody you know, everywhere you can. Because you talk about putting your finger on the pulse of what is actually going on in this specific police department, Kingsport Police Department. Leave your thoughts about this for the world and the global thought police in the comments section below. Subscribe for more tyranny busting content. Mm -hmm.